Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extensions tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to create SVGs from scratch using HTML and JS. And this will allow you to basically learn how SVGs are formatted and then create what kind of images you'd like to create. In this case, I'm just creating this grid of random colors. Um, each one of these is a separate SVG file that I'm actually saving into a location. I can open and use them later or generate them from scratch in my extension and then import them directly. This is going to be super useful as you'll learn how to build SVGs. Um, and that's something that's actually quite simple if you know HTML. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member or supporter. That comes with cool perks and helps us out financially. Also down below, check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff that I make. Now, if you go to the W3Schools page for SVG, what is SVG? Let's just go for the super basics before we jump in. SVG stands for a scalable vector graphics. This is something that can be scaled as small or as large as you want without showing obvious artifacting or pixels. Um, it can be used to define graphics for the web and it's a recommendation of W3C. Uh, so an SVG can be represented actually by like an HTML element. You have an SVG tag, um, but additionally, th that's how you can kind of build one from scratch, which is what we're gonna use. So basically what we're gonna be doing is creating an SVG tag in inline code. We're gonna define all the properties of it, and then we're going to spit that out into an SVG file. And by proxy, when we do this, we basically are using HTML tags to create an image. And we can do this then programmatically with automation or whatever we feel is necessary. So we're gonna be using the SVG tag itself to create the SVG, and then we're going to save it to an SVG file, basically writing this kind of data to the file. And then we can import that back into our extension or manipulate our SVG however we see fit. So basically this is an adaptation to the extension testing extension that I've provided for a while. I'll update this and upload it to GitHub as well. Link for that will be down below where you can then get this code exactly and start modifying it and adjusting it for your case. Um, but I'm not going to type all this from scratch. I'm going to simply have a detailed overview of how it works. It's very simple. In our JSX file, we don't have anything going on. In our main index.html, we also don't have anything going on. Pretty much everything is going to be happening here in our JavaScript. So that should keep it fairly simple and manageable. Uh, one thing I should say is we have inside of our body of our HTML, we have a, a div called preview section because I want a section uh, or a div that I can put all of my randomly generated SVGs into. So I do have preview section, which will be the parent to all of our SVG children. But like I said, the meat of everything is going to be in main JS. So let's go ahead and see what we do here. Where do we start? We're going to start with a, a half second set timeout just for fun. Uh, and then we're going to have a function called generate SVGs. Quite simple. The first time we load the extension, it's going to wait half a second before initializing our JS. And when it does, we're going to run generate SVGs, which is just kind of a outer function. Then inside of uh, generate SVGs, we're going to define how many SVGs we want. Do we want three? Do we want nine? Um, all this is going to be controlled by this for loop. So if I say three um, and then I generate, I'm just going to get three, obviously. This is just so we have an outer function to actually control how many SVGs we're going to generate. And of course, this will be dependent on your situation. You may want to generate hundreds or thousands, just a few, or have them iterate back into it, it, itself to have like a generative random effect. Um, but then the meat of everything is located in one function. I've tried to keep this as simple to understand as possible, but we have this function called generate random icon. There's a few things we're going to need to generate our random icon, right? We're going to need a predefined size of what we want our icons to be, because we are going to have to put this information into our SVG attributes and properties to make sure that the sizing is correct. So then after that, we're going to define where we want to basically save all of these two. In my case, I'm just saving it to a, a desktop folder called icons, and I've hard coded that just for example purposes. 
Do remember, if you're using this for a real production or released extension, um, you want to make sure that you're not saving these newly generated SVGs into your extensions folder, as this will break the code signing and cause it to stop working properly. So uh, you'll definitely want to have an external uh, non-admin required folder, which you can read and write files without causing any issues when saving our SVGs. Then what we're going to do is basically generate a bunch of random colors. So I have this basic abstract block design, and I want to generate five random colors. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four. Uh, there's, there's five, trust me. Maybe maybe two of them are the same, but there, there's five random colors. So in order to generate that, I have a variable called color one, color two, color three, color four, and color five. Each time I run these, it's going to call random hex color. This is just code you can find anywhere online converting RGB to hex, hex to RGB. We're basically going to start off by defining a color with a hashtag or a pound sign, which is the beginning of any hex code. And then six times, which is the length of a hex code, we're going to basically generate a random number between 0 and 1.0. And then we're going to basically convert it to the proper bits in order to appear as a hex color. So basically, we're going to generate a random number, convert that random number into what is basically a hex value, a one or two hex value. And then after six times of that, we're going to get a random hex and return that color. Um, after that, I want to get a timestamp just so that I can have a unique identifier for each of my SVG files. As you can see here, we have icon and then all this information here. This is, you know, your date time settings. And that will ensure that each time we generate the random icon, even if this is like iteration two of our for loop, it's going to have a unique timestamp unless you're generating these so fast that the Windows or Mac microseconds can't keep up with it. So we have our path folder. We have our width and height defined. We have our colors generally generated randomly, excuse me. And we have a timestamp to give our each of our SVGs a unique name. Now, the main thing we do is we're going to write inline uh, HTML code. So if I wanted to start defining my SVG from scratch, I could say SVG is equal to, and then we're going to use these symbols here. I'm not exactly sure what these are called. They're not parentheses, but they're like a slashed parentheses. And inside of here, we can write as many multi-line uh, code as we want. This is super useful for writing uh, inline JS, inline HTML, inline CSS, everything. So inside of here is where we're going to basically define what would be our uh, HTML code. So what I can even do is I can grab, let's say this SVG rounded rectangle and just paste it in there. Now, instead of using SVG content, I'm going to use uh, my SVG variable. You'll see I have this section here, which runs some replace operations. Uh, that's because if you notice inside of here, this is a, a bit more complicated of an SVG. Um, but one cool trick is that you can use other programs like Illustrator, and some websites will allow you to convert images to this kind of SVG formatting. And then all you have to do is go in and adjust what you want the widths and heights and things like that to be. But let's say uh, we're going to use this SVG content. I have also included these little sections here, which is a super useful uh, JavaScript uh, strategy I've learned, where if you put in, say, brackets color one here, and this is within a string, well, we don't necessarily have to type in or break out of our code, say, for example. Sometimes I would previously do something like this. And then I guess you can't even do that. So we use this string because later we're going to replace this with our actual color one string hex value. And what this means is we're going to say our content, all of this text here, replace anything that says brackets color one with our actual JavaScript variable, which is returned from our random hex color. Same thing with color two, color three, color four and color five within these uh, brackets here. You can see we have instances and these uh, are equal to the fill colors inside of our SVG. So basically what we're doing is it's called a placeholder, right? We're leaving a placeholder for each of our colors, which we're then going to replace um, with an instance of whatever our generated, uh, S or generated random hex value is going to be. So that's for a more complicated setup if you want to do that. 
for really quick purposes, I'm going to use this SVG code and we're going to write it to a file. How are we going to write it? We're going to use the built-in node.js fs file system module. So we just have to include it by saying const fs or let fs equal require fs. And of course, if you've set up everything properly in your manifest, like enabling node.js and such, uh, you'll have no problems here. Then we're going to use the write file method or function to basically write our file. How are we going to write it? We're going to use our uh, panel data folder we just set up. So it's going to know we want to save this on the desktop in the icons folder. And we're going to call each one of our files icon underscore timestamp svg. So that way we know it's an icon. We have a separator. We have our unique identifier or our time code and then SVG to make sure we get the file uh, extension correct. What are we going to save to it? Our SVG content. And then we have our error. If we get any errors, I want to alert that error. Otherwise, um, we can ignore this for now. I have this code set up here to generate these in the UI itself. So we create an image tag. We set the source to our test, which in this case I've changed. So we're just going to set our source to uh, copy and paste this and our timestamp there will remain the same. We'll change the class to image so I can style it if necessary. And then finally, we'll add this to our preview section, which we define down here. So let's see. Um, actually, really quick, I need to change SVG content to SVG because that is our new SVG content. We'll save it and run it. As you can see, we get empty. Let's clear our icons folder and regenerate. In this case, we're generating two SVGs and they're not appearing to be in the correct formatting. Let's go ahead and add this uh, XML NS uh, into our SVG attribute. And there we go. We've generated three of these uh, directly from W3Schools SVG rounded rectangle. And if we wanted to, uh, we could modify this to say, actually, I don't want the fill to be red. I want the fill to be like we had our placeholder, color two, for example. And then instead of saying SVG content, replace color two with color two, use SVG, replace color two with color two. And that way, each time in the future we launch this, every single time we're gonna get some randomization and random colors uh, displayed for each of these SVGs. And of course, these are all going to be written to your uh, file system so you can adjust them and modify them or load them and send them off. And all of this is basically HTML code, which can be modified in terms of the sizing, the colors, the properties, everything can be automated, replaced, linked to something in the UI, randomized, all of that stuff. So I'm gonna post this code in the GitHub, make sure you check it out below. But that is how you can create SVGs and automate them uh, inside of an extension or just using HTML or JS code. Uh, there's really a ton of customization you can do here. You can take SVGs straight from the web and use them. Obviously just make sure you include uh, this all important XML, XML NS is equal to W3 link. So it knows the formatting that it's an XML file. And with this information, you'll be able to generate a ton of different unique SVGs, automate things to your liking, and just add a ton more power and more rasterized graphics to your workflow. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. Down in the description, follow us on GitHub for coding updates where I'm also gonna upload this code as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to keep up with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member or supporter. Comes with cool perks and helps us out. And also check out the links down below to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll SVG you next time. Tell me.